Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about why things like chicken, broccoli, and rice diets are so successful, why so many people have used them successfully to build lots of muscles, get really, really lean, uh, and all of these things. And I think the point people are missing here is not that it's specifically about chicken, broccoli, and rice, that you have to eat those exact things. It's the principle behind it. Okay, because you say that and people are like, why well, we get really tired of just eating those things? And it's like, well, I would make the joke and say that people who are overweight don't get tired of eating. If you got tired of eating, you wouldn't be fat. Just kind of throwing that out there. So that aside though, let's, I won't really go there. I'll be nicer than that. Because I, I do understand that we need variety. All right, it's the principle of it. Let's assume you have multiple things there. What if it's not just chicken? What if it's uh, steak, fish, turkey? Right? What if you have a rotation of those and as long as you know roughly how much of it you're eating, you have your protein and your numbers from it. You know them all the time. Really easy. All right. I think people are going to see where this is going to go. Why rice? Well, rice is cheap. It's affordable. It's just a very clean carb source. Um, uh, and I might like a lot of fruit and I've done lean bulks on very, very high fruit, but at the end of the day, starches and starchy carbs are very cost effective. They're very filling. They're very nutritious. Okay? They are very unlikely to create problems. And people can argue about that all they want with celiacs and things. But if you don't have celiacs, I don't know why you're, you're discussing grains. Um, most of the problems of wheat belly and all that nonsense has all been largely debunked. It's not, not really true. Now, even if you have any of those issues, rice tends to be very easy. Uh, and most of the best athletes around the world eat high rice diets just because of the availability of it as, as a nice, clean carb source that's easy to prepare, easy to track. So let's come over and discuss why rice, but it doesn't have to be rice. It could be oats, it could be quinoa, it could be, hey, it could be potatoes if you want, I don't care. The point is, notice that it's a starchy carb that's easy to measure in portion, okay? Kind of a big deal here. That is kind of a big deal in this equation, isn't it? Why? Starchy carbs don't require any conversion. We don't need to worry about figuring out what's going on with consistency of them, with uh, you know fructose fermentation stuff in the GI tract. They're again always easy to prepare for the most part, but it's the consistency. We measure these things out. Most of these starchy carbs are in either predetermined packets, you know, if you're buying pasta or whatever. Um, but otherwise, if you're doing any of the others that you measure out yourself, you're measuring them. It is very, very easy to track your non-protein calorie sources there. Okay? It is extremely easy to track. Therefore, we can adjust calories easily. And even if you're changing through different ones, the point is the same. You're eating generally whole foods. You're eating easy to track foods. You're generally eating a lot of protein. Uh, you're, you're eating fairly complex carbs here as a starch. Everything is easy to track. Dietary fat tends to be uh, fairly low or manageable unless you're adding extra in, but in which case you can track it easy. Since these are simple to prepare food, just someone says, well, I don't want to add some fat or some olive oil or whatever. It's really easy to just track that and add it to what you're doing. Okay. And that's kind of the point too. Then on top of that, we always have vegetables thrown in. And, and in this case, you know, the chicken, rice, broccoli type diet, uh, you know, they're thrown in and the calories from those tend to be relatively incidental. I know people will say, well, you should track the calories. You really, you're really going to track 100 calories of broccoli. I mean, you could, or you could just account for it and say, hey, maybe my, uh, my vegetables on average are about this many calories. That's fine. But the point is it makes tracking easy. You're always getting vegetables thrown in. There's additional fiber, all these phytonutrients, all these wonderful things that you need. They help with satiety. All right. So what's going on with a diet like this? Well, again, we say chicken first. So again, high protein, high animal source protein, so high bioavailable proteins. Starchy carbohydrates to fuel your training, keep your blood sugar level. Vegetables to add extra 
insoluble fiber. Okay, vegetables add extra insoluble fiber because your grains are usually adding soluble. They have different benefits. Uh, and all this other nutrition helps with appetite, helps with just overall health. I'm not saying people don't add other things in. I mean, I, I like to add low fat or fat free dairy to these sort of things if you need extra uh, fat and nuts come in. Um, if I'm doing this sort of approach, you know, walnuts are great to add to your yogurts and things. Because again, those are meals also you can put in. But mostly, if your diet is largely revolving around these things, guess what? You have all the stuff I just described, and it's easy to track, easy to couple, come up, uh, easy to track, to adjust. That's the word I'm looking for. It's very easy to adjust your calories by simply changing the measurements of something like the carbohydrate usually, right? The amount of the rice or the oats or whatever you're putting in your diet. And those are then flexible also. Let's say you don't want to have that. Let's say you rotate it through different stuff, right? Maybe you have, want to do a lot of steak and potatoes and carrots or something for a few days. Maybe other days it's chicken, broccoli, and rice. Maybe you want to change the, the meat around. Maybe you have days where you want to do a little more oats, so then you get more of your lean proteins from some uh, fat-free yogurt. Throw a few a little frozen berries and stuff into some of that. Find extra vegetables that you can eat with that. Okay? The idea is the same anyway it breaks down. It's usually lean animal source protein, starchy carbohydrates, vegetables, possibly a little fruit. Any fats that you then add in because of a diet approach like this is probably going to be healthier fats. What are you going to do? A little walnuts or some nuts or some peanut butter, something in with oats or into your, your yogurts and things. I like to take yogurt and mix a little nuts or frozen fruit and protein powder with it. Works phenomenal. But even setting those other things aside, come back over to the other. Lean meat, starchy carbs, vegetables in easy to track formats. This is one of the most successful things you can do and it destroys all these different goofball, silly ass fad diets, keto, vegan diets, paleo diets, carnivore. Look, this approach works. It's time proven, healthy, science behind all of most of these foods. So yeah, these are, these are pretty good choices. Um, but the track record of success this is actually what I just described is how most most of the leanest people uh, who still have muscle and fitness uh, eat on the face of the earth. That's how the majority eat successfully. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.